Yeah, let's go on, Doug. Um, obviously, right, right away from that first quarter, I know you guys had you know what, seven seven points, nineteen percent shooting in that first. What was Tennessee kind of doing um, early on, and, and maybe did they replicate some of that um, early in the second half as well defensively? Yeah, that 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 first quarter, I, I felt like we didn't create enough space with cuts. We didn't play with enough pace. But holding them to 15 was probably not bad. So we were doing a decent job pressuring some wings to make it tougher to look into uh, to the key. Uh, and obviously that didn't go very well for the for the entire game. But but the tone was set on that defensive end. We didn't really turn it over uh, that much, and we were getting the steal. So you know some parts of that game plan was working, uh, but we just didn't play with the right pace and space. Uh, to utilize the skills that we have out there, and, and you know, we just needed to hit a few shots as well. Right, and then obviously in that second quarter there, I think you guys uh, you, cut, you cut the halftime lead down to three. Um, you know, what, what was your mentality? I guess how, how did the team kind of keep up? You know, after that tough first, to, you know, stay in there and make it you know a close game going into halftime. Yeah, and part of it is we. I mean, this sounds weird, but we went small. I mean, it's kind of ironic to say that because we're always small. But, uh, you know, Ree Thompson did a really nice job, and she helped create a little better space on the floor because Tennessee is very big, and, and uh, you know, we're kind of driving in there and getting our shots blocked instead of keeping our dribble alive and dribbling underneath the hoop. But we did a little bit more of that in that second quarter. And, uh, and, and to be honest with you, I was pretty excited to, to be down three uh, at, at halftime. And for whatever reason, I mean, I could tell, I could tell during halftime that uh, – that uh, they weren't, we weren't that excited about it, and so something we need, we need, we're, we're fighting for a tournament, we're fighting uh, for a lot of things, and uh, you know for whatever reasons, uh, we we didn't have that same excitement coming out of that second half, and Tennessee sure did because you, and again you let up for just a little bit against these best teams, they make you pay, and uh, you know that was a. Uh, that was a great job coming out at halftime by Tennessee. A couple pitch aheads for threes, an easy uh, post feed for, for key, and then all of a sudden you just can't let quality teams feel good about themselves. And then we just dug ourselves a hole from there trying to fight back and, 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 make, the, and make it competitive. But, uh, but I, I think that game, there was a big difference coming out of that, out of that halftime. Um, and, and they were a little bit more ready than what we were, to be honest with you. As, as much as I hate to say that. Yeah, I mean, what do you think maybe kind of plays a role into that? Do you think there's maybe just some mental fatigue of, you know, having seven players and, and you know, getting to this point in the season? I mean, you only got two regular season games or one left now in the regular season. Yeah, and it really ticks me off. I mean, it, to be honest with you, it, again, uh, it, it, I'm sure it's mental fatigue, but we know that, and, and we just – now we have to really embrace it. That is what we are. And in when the ball, when, when they have that run there in that third quarter, one, we can't allow it to have, happen multiple times. It, it's always going to happen once. But it, when it happens back to back, and, and again, you let that other team feel good about themselves, which they did, uh, it's really hard. So uh, uh, they, the kids are giving their maximum effort, hats off to them, our team, I, again. But at the same time, is uh, we can do this. We can stay in the fight longer. Uh, I believe in them, um, and, uh, and we're not going to use excuses. And you know, nobody cares about the choppy water. They just want you to land the ship, and, and that's what we want to do. Right. You talked a little bit earlier about Reed Thompson. I think uh, you know she's shooting close to fifty percent um, from deep, just in, in an SEC play alone. You know, how much of a weapon has she kind of become for you guys? Um, you know, especially as you moved on, kind of without Rakia and, and having you know this, the the slimmer lineup that you do now. I mean, she's been fantastic. I mean, against all competition. So you know, Tennessee hasn't lost too many times in this arena to any, you know anybody in conference, and. She was able to shoot the ball. She was able to drive the ball with authority. Uh, she was able to play physical. Uh, you know, she's not she's not going to blow by anybody, but but she plays with deception, um, and she can get a few post ups in there too. I, she is she's turned into a really good weapon. So it's and again, you're always trying to develop people. 
and develop players along the way. And, and sometimes the score can really uh, skew everything and, and you're just upset that you didn't win. And, and, and I am. But at the same time, there, there are some performances out there and there is some growth that we cannot lose sight of in the big picture. And uh, re really proud of her. And, and uh, you know, we've been playing off of her a lot too. You know, using her as a weapon, which, um, you know, if you were to start the season and say Ree Thompson is going to be your weapon, I don't think anybody would have. Well, first of all, they said, who's Ree Thompson? Uh, and, and that's credit to her and her work ethic and, and her focus and determination. Just a couple more for me. I know, um, you know, with, with Arkansas being the last game of the regular season, I, I guess what's the message kind of trying to get out of this four-game skid, knowing that, you know, with, with the win, there's a really good chance you guys are in that. I mean, you already are on the right side of the tournament picture and, and a lot of the projections. What's kind of the push to kind of maybe you know, get past that mental fatigue to, to kind of close out this season um, with, with the potential you think this team has? Yeah, I, I don't have the answer right now. It's, uh, and again, I do think we're, we're still trending in the right way. And, uh, but uh, we can't feel sorry for ourselves. We can't keep on looking at, the, at these last few games and say we lost to Tennessee, we lost to LSU. All right, we, we got to focus on the growth piece and, and how we can build and grow. And it doesn't matter. Like, we're not stopping thinking like that, even though there's one game left in the regular season in an SEC tournament. That that's got to be the approach, and that's, that's the only way I know. And, and, that's, and that's the way underdogs are able to do special things at special times. And the uh, last thing I want to ask you is, I know you were saying that maybe there would be a bit nostalgic kind of getting back to Tennessee. I mean, what was it like for you kind of being on that sideline at the back of your alma mater? Well, it was to start, uh, and, it, and it was last night. I was walking through campus, and then as I thought, once that ball went up, like I couldn't stand looking at that orange. And, and Rocky Top at one time was, was one of my all-time favorites, and, and that might be the worst song I've ever heard. Um, so I, so I guess I've got it out of my system, uh, thanks to Kelly Harper uh, and, and that team. Um, but it, it was just a basketball game. That's, that's what it was, and, and they got the best of us tonight.